it's Jennifer from Belladonna's Botanicals. And you know what? You know what helps to record a video? Hitting the record button. Today I learned something new. Anyways, so following up to my previous video that I did on knowing your limits when working with the spirits and demonic divine and broadly in occultism, I I, I brought a topic and that I wanted to make a specific video on. Um, and this is how to block, bind, and banish someone from the demonic realms and working with the demonic divine for their own safety. This is something that you're probably going, wait, what? <laughs> Hear me out. Um, there are people that should not be working with the demonic divine. They should not be working with the demonic realms. They should not be doing these rituals. They should not have access to that energy for their own safety and the safety of those around them because they will cause harm to themselves and others because they are either working way beyond their skill level or they do not have the mental faculties to deal with it or are any number of other things, you know, rampant, un, unfettered drug and alcohol abuse, the untreated mental health, psychosis and delusions and, you know, anything or, or just, I'm sorry, I'm not mincing words on this, just giant dumbasses that should not be like, People, people who I would worry about if they picked up matches, you know, because they would accidentally burn the house down, stupid. Um, so I'm going to put this also with the caveat of, hi, I have an, an autoimmune disorder with chronic pain and mobility issues. I am autistic and ADHD, and I have uh, complex PTSD and some other health issues too, but those are the big ones there. So I'm not coming at this from an ableist perspective. I obviously am very vocal at, at speaking out against ableism in, in the occult spectrum, but as I pointed out in the previous video, we need to know our limitations. I am not capable of everything, whether it is due to my training, whether it's due to my knowledge level, whether it's due to my interest, whether it's due to my ability to handle it. Like I couldn't go and become a landscaper because I have, I, well, apparently I have really bad seasonal allergies to the point that they give me hives. So couldn't be outside during the, during the time in which that would need to be done. There's a limitation. I'm acknowledging the fact that I can't do this, that doing this will make me sick and cause harm to me. Um, I just don't want to see people get hurt. And I've encountered people, and I'm talking, this is a very, very small, like maybe a small handful of people in my time doing this that I'm like, yeah, you should be, no. No, you should not be doing that. You should not be working with demons and working with any of this, doing that or melon rituals. You know, you should not be working with the, you know, the demonic divine because you're going to fuck yourself up and you're going to fuck up everything around you. And I do not want to give you the tools to do that. Because, and I realize we come at these things from different aspects, different, different education, different ability levels, and that's okay. I mean, there's things that I am not capable of doing or just don't have any interest in doing. Like, I'm sorry, but the way my ADHD brain works, um, if I have to do something at every day, every day at the same time of day for six months for a ritual, guess what? It's never going to happen because I will never remember to do that thing every day for six months at the same time. I could even put multiple reminders and I will still not do it. You know, I can leave my medication right here, arm reach. Do I remember to take it every day? No. Um, that's a limitation and that's okay. I'm acknowledging, I'm acknowledging for my own safety that there are some things I can't do or that would cause harm. Um, you know, if I was in the middle of a psychotic break, do I want to be like summoning demons to like curse my enemies? Probably not. Um, I know this might also sound a little gatekeepery at this point, but what I'm saying is really, this is to protect 
someone from themselves more than than anything else. Now, this is not, you know, the bullshit of, oh, I don't like you. I don't want you working with Lucifer. So I'm going to block you from that, from, from that. No. Or, oh, I, oh, I'm a big, I have a big mad about something stupid and I'm going to curse you by blocking you from the demonic realms. <laughs> you know, this is more of a force majeure, like, this person needs to be put in a protective bubble <laughs> for their own good. Um, and, you know, I've talked with other colleagues about this and how to do this, run some, did some test runs. Um, really, and what this comes down to, if you have watched my video on um, will, will demons always do your bidding? Short answer, no. Um, this is something that you're going to want to do in a layered approach. Like you want to communicate, you know, first maybe with your patron and matron deity. So it'd be like, it, because if this is just petty bullshit, chances are none of this is going to have any effect on that person and or at all. So um, what I want to say there is, if this is just and right, and this is something you're doing for the protection of another person and anyone that may be surrounding them, because they're going to end up cursing themselves more than they're cursing anyone else. And they are going to cause, I mean, I talk with colleagues and so you got people opening portals in their houses and, and all sorts of random, you know, poltergeist and shit coming through and, you know, constantly having to do cleanups and stuff because people don't know what they're doing or like, oh, I'm going to summon, you know, everyone, which you can do, but, you know, <laughs> results may vary. So this is what I've worked out. And I'm still working through this. Um, so for me, I'm a, I, I work from the demonolatrist per perspective. And I'm going to be adding some more content about this. So I work with, so for me, Lucifer and Lilith are my matron and patron. Um, so what I do in my basic, you know, ritual kind of ritual setup is I will do when I say invoke in demonology terms, I'm really just reciting the ends for each of them and lighting a candle. So I have a particular, maybe I'll do a video of my how I have my altar set up at some point. So I have um nine pillar candles for each one for each of the nine demonic divinities. This is very different and much more longstanding than what we know from the nine demonic gatekeepers. There's a little bit of overlap, but not very much. Um, so each of these candles I have, in, you know, I've inscribed this is the Ducant sigil. I have their N in them. So I have those. Um, the, and they're, those candles are always on my altar. Um, so I also invoke the elementals. So for in the demonolatry, I do... Belial, Earth, Lucifer, Air, Flurious, Fire, Leviathan, Water, Satan as Spirit. So what I've done, so, and, and again, those invocations are just like the demonic ends. I am not forcing anyone into, you know, I'm not trying to pull the spirits from whatever they're doing. Um, and that's, I always just kind of find that rude, but um so it's, 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 it's I, I kind of look at the demonic ends as almost like they're calling cards or phone numbers. So, you know, what I did in this particular in, 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 instance, since this is a much larger working, and boy, was this an exhausting working, <laughs> not going to lie, um, is I did the invocations of the demonic ends for the decant hierarchy decante hierarchy and the goetic spirits so that's a lot of spirits um it's not that i was pulling you know hundreds of spirits into my room you know into my house for you know thing i'm just calling on invoking them as sort of like you know hear my plea kind of thing um so what i had done here um i've been i've been making candles again um is i created a candle for this so not a candle, but this will do for now for uh, just to show you sort of thing. So what I did, I took a jar kind of like this. It was empty. <laughs> so I used that and I created a candle. So what I did with this, so this is just a, 
a different kind of spell dart kind of thing. But what I did was, so I put the, you know, the, there was sticker and the wick on the bottom. And I took, um, you can use any number of tag locks or things. What I did was I took the person's name, address, phone, <laughs> you know, email, whatever I had, just on a little piece of paper, put that in the bottom of the candle, um, like at the base of the wick. Um, and the candle itself was, I, I did a mix of, you can pull in anything here you want to put in there. I used a lot of different powders. So I put in like, say some hot foot powder, some you know, or binding herbs, things like that. Um, you could use any of the elements that would be blocking someone, creating obstacles, binding them, banishing them, even return to sender or broadly baneful things that you could put in there as well. Um, so you can mix those in with the candles. I mixed a little bit of the powders and the oils in with the candle itself as, as I was, I used soy wax. So you just melt it and mix it all in. Um, I used a uh, black candle dye and I used, you know, some regular oils, probably like some banishing oil, binding oil, return to sender, that kind of stuff and adorned it with some black tourmaline, some of my skull beads from Amala and coffin nails because why not you did some fanciness so what i did with the candle then uh, this is part of this ritual here as i i was calling in and invoking all these different spirits from this um and i had created a petition on just a piece of paper write it fold it and that went under the jar candle and so you know i burnt the candle um probably did for a few days until like i kind of got that feeling like sometimes candles can be a bitch at staying lit and this one was being a little bit of a pain staying lit and i finally kind of got to the point with it where i was like enough that it, that it had burned that i had felt like the job was done and what i did there since it had a lid like what i just showed you is that i took the petition from underneath it folded it up within in the candle remains and then filled in the the empty space with probably you could use any combination of like lemon juice vinegar four thieves any like i have a return to sender spray stuff like that anything that you could put in there and that that was kind of what i ended up doing for that part of it so and always with when I do rituals like this, I thank the spirits and you know give them license to depart. But and I had another person doing some some work on their end as well. But I really I st I would say I struggled with it, but like conceptually, it was just something that I I've come to realize in the past year is this shit ain't for everyone. And if you're not ready for it, you're gonna fuck yourself up really bad. Um, not everyone will. I mean, we learn, well, like some of us are capable of fucking shit up, learning our lessons, and I'm not gonna do that again. Um, but I really, for those force majeure, you know, act of God kind of like this person needs to not be working this current, like, I mean, here's an example of one. So back whenever it was three years ago, I think, I think it was like 2000, well, maybe three or four years ago, um, the, the case in, in, in England where Daniel Hussein uh, murdered two young women um, in a, a, a pact to Lucifuge Rofacal, and they were sacrifices to him. That is someone who should have been blocked from working within the demonic realm. Now, chances are they were going to do whatever they did. They were going to do that regardless of, of the means, but why give them the why give them the loaded pew pew and the pew pew propellants to get the job done? Um, that person should have been blocked, banished, and bound from working within the demonic realm. Um, because a lot of times those people, and here's the reason why. As a lot of time, those people are going to end up working with trickster spirits or just shitty spirits of the deceased, and not and thinking they're demons when they're not. 
and they're gonna be working with things that they don't know how to work with um or trying to work with them as if they're working with you know the demonic divine and you're really just you know messing with a pesky land spirit or something <laughs> or a trickster or anything like that so because a lot of this comes down to discernment and when people don't have the mental faculties to discern basic ass shit um they shouldn't they shouldn't be working with this i'm sorry it's not for everyone Okay, so one thing I wanted to add here to this video on the block, blocking, banishing, and binding someone from the demonic realm, and why I'm saying this as, you know, a creator, and why I'm saying this as, you know, a business owner, someone who works with a lot of different clients and stuff like that, is I, on several occasions, I've had clients dabbling in shit like this that is so bad, and just by the mere whether I'm doing readings or divination for them or just, you know, answering their 4 million questions and, and, and all this and the back and forth and all this stuff, I've gotten some really icky sh shit from them attached to me. Now they weren't cursing me. They weren't doing anything untoward towards me. And I was, and I am very well protected. My place is very well warded and I have all my protections in place and they're, what they were doing and their energy was so messed up. It was literally sticking to me. Like, like, uh, and like, basically I had their energetic tar stuck all over me, my space, my, like the amount of work I had to do. And also with my colleague that does my removals and stuff for the, for me when I, because one, when I was dealing with one of them, I was like, I'm like, look, I am, I am out. I have doctor's appointments all day. This shit is all like, I mean, I'm feel I'm even out of my house and feeling it. I'm like, when you get a chance, just like do a scan, figure out what the fuck is going on. Cause I like, I don't think this person sent anything to me. I think I've just got ick attached because it feels very similar to the way I had it from another client I worked with that had that like ick energy that that's you've got so much random shit attached to you it is flinging it getting flung all over everyone else in your vicinity including me and I'm like the hell like <laughs> so yes that is why I do take this seriously um because if they're uh, if they're fucking around that badly in in magic and the demonic realms that like I'm getting blowback from their their bullshit hitting me, um, and it, you know, like I don't it, it has nothing to do with the products it has nothing to do with my attachment to them or things like that. It's because it was some of this was just me doing readings or 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 or, or talking to these people that they're projecting their toxic energetic sludgy tendrils and energy all over the place and I'm, I'm having to now add an extra layer in of cleaning all their bullshit out so if their bullshit is hitting me and these are not people i'm in close proximity to in any way if their bullshit is hitting me Imagine what their bullshit is doing to the people they live with and the people they work with and the people they see all the time. So when I am talking about force majeure, act of God, um, bind, banish, and block people from the demonic realm and magics, that's what I'm talking about. And that is my reason for it. And I stand by that 100% because I've had two instances so far this year from cl now former clients where I've had to deal with shit like that. Um, and like, I can tell when I'm working with someone and they, you know, they just need a little handhelding getting along the way. And when it's just like a feedback loop, you're just in this constant feed. You're just, they're just stuck in a circle in a feedback loop. I'm like, you know what? You're, I've given you all the tools to get out of this feedback loop. You're not out of, like, I, I, I can't be sucked into it. I have to protect myself, my business, my energy, everything around me. And if that means going to, to some people, I am more than fine doing that. But I would say this is one of those, in case of emergency break glass, 
types of workings. Um, it's not for petty bullshit. I mean, sure, I, you can use it for petty bullshit. I just don't recommend use it for petty bullshit because it's probably just not going to do anything. Um, and, you know, if someone really needs that, you can add clauses into it. Like, it just might be like, right now, this person is in a really bad place and should not be working in working with this. And they're just, you know, going st st full steam ahead and going to hurt themselves in the process or others around them. And you just need to maybe kind of contain them, put them in a containment unit for a little bit, and then, you know, have a caveat in there of, or fail safe or something of, at which point that they are capable of, you know, working within this current again, then, you know, lift all restrictions. Or if this is not being done, you know, because sometimes we we make judgment calls on things that aren't the best or yeah, or that you know you, you, like sometimes i'll look at like year a year or so later, i'm like yeah i don't know why i cursed that person or why i did this or whatnot it really you know it wasn't wasn't worth it <laughs> you know so um That's all I got. Um, and again, not for petty purposes. This is for for like, what's the when you get the, the involuntary fifty one fifty or something? Like sometimes you just need to be put on a seventy two hour hold and you know cool down. Because so many times when we want to do something magically, when, when something happens and we want to have that, we haven't taken the time to really sit and think about it. Think about the best approach and angle to do to manifest what we need to work on there. So anyways, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Be sure to follow us on social media. Sign up for our e-newsletter. Algorithm suck. I'm tired of saying all of this. Support us, uh, you know, with a one-time donation. Links below. YouTube, Patreon, yakety schmackety. Love y'all.